Hey everybody, how you doing? We are running a couple minutes late today. We are uh, trying to figure out this new setup. With uh, We actually have... Uh, oh, uh, oh, there we go. I found you guys on my phone. Alright guys, a, uh, yeah, we have... Uh, you can... Alright, my head's not in it, but that's okay. Is it not? Yep. Do you guys want to see my head or not? I don't, I mean, it's fine if you don't. Just barely. There we go. There oh, we go. I was zipping down, trying to get in there. Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. Um, hey, we've got four people watching. That's great. We appreciate you guys watching. Um, we're going to try to, if you guys, uh, we, we have a couple topics we're going to talk about today. Not controversial at all. So that's a good thing uh, for some people. Anyways, uh, we're going to, we have a couple of topics we're going to talk about. If you guys have any questions and you want to talk, Okay, you want to talk? Chris Snyder wants to talk about Michael J. Fox and the Big Show. Okay. Um, okay, Michael J. Fox, um, very good actor. Um, I have seen him recently in like commercial in um, the uh, like where people have caught him like on the street and stuff like that. You can tell his Parkinson is really getting bad. Oh, I, I mean, really? just uh, unfortunately. And uh, the, the Big Show, he is. Uh, recently in a Christmas movie, I think uh, he's uh, his, his actual name is Paul White, uh, professional wrestler for years. He's really tall, like seven foot tall, six hundred pounds. Uh, I hear super nice to guy, very giving. So, but all right. So one of the things that we're going to talk about, I guess, a little bit later. So sure. We, we wanted to kind of drop it out there so people could uh, make their own comments before we get into it. But yeah, the two main topics we're going to talk about is how did we get started in cards? Um, that's one of the questions uh, a, a, a customer, a friend of ours, yeah. uh, had presented to us. He gave us a series of questions, so we're going to focus on that first. But we're also going to give our proje projections for the card market for the first quarter of 2021. So um, we might touch a little bit of uh, base on the last quarter of this year, but the first quarter of 2021. I'd kind of like to hear your guys' predictions sure. on what you think the card market might do. So if you log on, if you you know if you're on here watching this and you just want to make a couple brief uh, you know comments or whatever, maybe we can discuss some of those. But you know we have some opinions too. Yeah. But uh, like I said, first thing is how we got started in cards and that sort of yeah. thing. It was a question from uh, Bill. Josh. Okay, I want to yeah, I want to know about how we got started in cards. Um, honestly, I can go back. <laughs> I could go back to I was about eight years old, eight or nine years old. My, um, my my family's always went to yard yard sales, flea markets, stuff like that. And I remember my grandpa buying me. Uh, ended up being golf cards. It was on uh, 1981 Donner's golf cards, uh, Jack Nicklaus, you know, um, those that uh, Chi Chi Rodriguez, Fuzzy Zeller, all those guys were in it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, these are cool. But then I'm like. Then I worked my way into Return of the Jedi cards from Star Wars, and uh, I, you know, I bought, actually, that was my first actual box I bought. Like, I literally bought a box of them um, to open the packs. So, it was, um, and then um, I branched over into sports cards, because, you know, the stores, that's what they had, you know. So, if, if I went to um, Revco or across the street from my house, uh, there was a famous food mart, uh, and they would get cards in. Uh, I remember as far back actually opening when they were out, 86 Tops. 86 wow. Tops baseball and football. I yet to this day have still never opened an 86 Fleer pack, 86 Fleer basketball pack. Never seen them. Now, we have some friends, um, Bart and Tony, you guys have heard us mention them before. Um, they're older than us. By a couple years, so by the time that was coming out, they were just they were out of high school. You know, they had jobs and stuff like that, so they were open cases and cases and cases of that stuff, and you know, selling the sets for. They were buying a box for four, twelve dollars, I think they said, and they'd sell it. You could get three sets in a box, and they would sell them for twenty bucks a set. Wow. Nowadays, those sets are uh, three grand, two three grand. You know, it depends. Actually, it really depends on the condition of the Jordan, you know, or the rest of the set. Because people are grading everything from those years because 
there wasn't that, that that much made compared to today's modern market. So, but yeah, that's that's how I really got started. I I collected non-sport. Didn't know it was non-sport. Just knew it was cards, and I worked and uh, got into sports cards in about '85. That's cool. That's cool. Um, also, I was just going to mention that we do have a little bit uh, different uh, setup. We stepped it up a little bit. Yep. And actually, you may notice that you can hear us a lot better. We actually have mics uh, now that we're uh, working with. So we're trying those out. So let us know. You know, Give us some feedback on uh, do you like the, the angle at which you can see us now. Yep. Uh, we're going to mess with some lighting, I believe. And we do have these mics. Uh, in our test run, the mics seem to help quite a bit. But um, I guess uh, getting uh, how I got into cards is kind of the same way that I see a lot of people getting into cards now. And it's really uh, not fair of me because I judge uh, the people that are getting the cards this way now uh, for it being like a money thing. But to be completely honest, at about 14 years old, um, I literally was uh, buying and selling like gum at school because you're not supposed to have gum oh i may have done that too yeah you're, you're i not... can i can 100% tell you that yeah. i i once got a bag i carried a camouflage duffel bag yeah. and i always carried i, I usually had two 12 packs of pop mm -hmm. mountain dew and surge oh, wow. which is and uh i had uh blow pops uh -huh. and i had like and then i would be i would charge phenomenal prices for like Mm -hmm. A sucker would be like 50 cents or whatever, you know, and they only cost me like a dime or something like that. And a can of pop, I'd be a dollar. Yeah. And they it, didn't care if it was cool or not. Yeah. So I always was more entrepreneur like. And so at like 13, 14 years old, I'm in, you know, eighth grade selling uh, bubble gum. And my grandfather uh, was friends with somebody that owned like a little convenience store, just a little mom and pop convenience store. And I guess Tops had this deal where it was like the, bazooka big pack and you'd get like gum and suckers and all this and cards and so when he'd get these cards i would try selling them too at the same time about exactly that same time i had a friend um who collected cards now like me this friend wasn't particularly into sports uh, or anything he saw it as a money thing too so um this friend and i we started buying packs together and then i got a cousin involved that was a little bit younger We'd go buy packs, and I was I was more like 1988, 89, mm -hmm. buying packs of cards yeah. uh, at stores. I remember thinking it was a big deal that I went back to this mom and pop like convenience stores in Hocking Hills, and they had 88 tops because it was almost time for 90 tops. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I was like, oh, this is great. These are older. Yeah. Um, but I did that, and it's it's really weird. Um, even though I'm judging like the people following Gary V and trying to figure out how to to invest mm -hmm. in this. It started for me more as a money thing. Uh, my my love for sports came later, and it is still more for me probably uh, fifty percent. I love the hobby. Um, I love the people in the hobby, and I love that I can produce an income without having a real job. And then it's a love of sports, uh, about twenty five percent, and then, yeah. then an actual collecting of my you know of yeah. my favorite player and yeah. that sort of thing. Well, I would say also, I mean, for me, it was also a money thing too because I didn't yeah. have much money. I mean, we're spending our lunch money. Yeah. You know, I get like five bucks a week, and I go and buy cards, and by the end of the week, I'm like sitting there. Uh, I think we got because my dad because we had, we were a family of six, and we did, we never my dad had a factory job, took a lesser job there a coder at his job so he could be home for us to be in, involved in our lives after school so we saw him for he'd work till 3 30 come home you know play ball go to games and stuff like that but you know we got reduced lunch so it was like two dollars a week so i gave me three dollars to spend on cards and i'd go and buy packs of cards and hope i was gonna hit it big we thought um but we at that point i can tell you in 80 87 88 89 the card market was really hot. People were st stuff from the 50s and 60s was really starting to go up in the 70s too. And we were like, oh my gosh, uh, Mike Schmidt rookie is $175, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, and you never, you, you just never know what you're going to come across, you know. Yeah. And like you were saying about your, your father working a lot, um, the entrepreneur thing for me and the connection to cards, I mean, my I watched my father work a, a factory job that he didn't really like most of his most of his life 
So in me, it was this, like, here's my dad working, not liking life too much. Um, in our generation, you know, we kind of grew up with this mindset, like, if, if you don't like the job you do, get a, get a different one or get, mm-hmm. a, get a new one. Yeah. And I'm sitting here as a 45-year-old man that's had a full-time job where I clocked in and out maybe three years of my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, now I paid a big price for that because it was like, this is either going to work or not. And there were years where I made 15 grand a year or yeah. whatever. Um, but, um, you know, now with this upsurge in the card market, a lot of those years have kind of paid off, but I pretty much, it was like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur or starve trying to be one. Yeah. So, um, and we're definitely in an uptrend right now. Yeah. We're in an uptrend right now and we're, we're benefiting from that. I mean, anybody that's been in the hobby yeah. more than three or four years and yeah. collected or been I mean, trying to sell is I mean, probably, I mean, if you just collect, you collect, I understand yeah. that. And I got no yeah. problem with that. And I feel, I actually feel sorry for you right now because it's very difficult to collect. You know, yeah. we, we had a we had a customer come in yesterday. Um, he was he was an older gentleman. I had you know, and he was a he was offended because he had sets that he was trying to work on from the eighties, like eighty one tops. And I'm like, we don't carry commons. It there's really no market for it. And the market now is either rookies or stars or grading. Yeah, you know that's about it. Um, there is no, there is no money in putting together an 81 top set, yeah. you know, and he's like, I just want to put them together so I can give them to my church so they can sell them. And I'm like, you might as well just give them to them now and let the church get what they can get out of it. Cause it's, you know, an 81 top set, honestly, in my book for 50 bucks or some 50, 60 bucks, but no, there's nothing to go. There's nothing to look for in that, you know, a second year. Yeah. You got a Ryan that's in there. You got a second year uh, Ricky Henderson. There's no big stars, you know, unfortunately. So those comments, literally, I box them up and I resell them to another person. And I mean, it's 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 hard enough keeping track of the newer stuff and keeping stuff in here that's a doll, you know, around a dollar. Bobby keeps quarter cards, um, you know, mostly dollar cards and up, you know, but it, it's hard just to keep those in here. There's no way I'm putting together. 84 tops like sets every day that there's just no money in it unfortunately yeah. and it's it's always tough to um as you know a, sh- a local shop or as a, as a small business person um i mean there's only just like everybody else there's only so much so many hours in the day and you definitely want to provide good customer mm-hmm. service and you definitely yeah. want to help uh, anybody that you can help them but i mean it, it is really tough to make those decisions of do yeah. I do I go through this box for this guy's three dollars? Yeah. Or do I make a three hundred dollar sale on eBay and get that? Oh, for sure. Packed? I mean, and I mean, we I mean we are open limited hours. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if if we had if we had a bunch of people coming in like that were like, man, if you tell me, hey, I I have to I can only be here at twelve thirty, and you tell me advance, more than likely I'm going to be here. Where yeah. the only the only day the cra- the craft mall is not open is on Mondays. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we have availabilities, but we also have lives and, you know, the, the shop does help my income. Yeah. But eBay takes care of my income. Yeah. And, and we it were, has for the last couple we, of years. We were just talking, the, the sales that run through here for me are maybe 25% of my gross sales. And mm-hmm. I don't even know if that's accurate, if that yeah. might even be high. So it's... Um, it, you know, it, it is tough to, to, so much is done, like, online, mm-hmm. so much can be done For sure. that way. Well, it's a convenience of, uh, you know, you go, you can sit down, and, and Rob has a website that you can, you know, you literally can buy it, and he has marked on the website what he has on the shelf, mm-hmm. um, it's gametimesportscollect.com, um, you know, it, you don't even have to come in the shop, you know, he'll send you boxes for not $5 shipping, you know, it's just very fair. Um, on a single box, so um, then you know we also offer curbside if uh, if somebody doesn't with, with this pandemic still in effect. Even though people are getting shots, mm-hmm. it the 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 shots are out there. Not everybody's got them, so I don't think it's time to take off the <laughs> mask yet. No. We we I'm not wearing it right now, but we don't no. have anybody in our shop right this second, so we're okay. Yeah, but we uh, we definitely. 
we are getting a lot of customers in. We're getting a lot of people coming in that haven't been in a while that they're, they're feeling more safe with the market, you know, and safe to get out and about. And that's great. You know, we, we, we want you to come in, but we still do offer curbside or uh, meeting people, you know, within like 20, 20 miles of here. If, if, if you can't make it to the shop, we've done that before. So, yeah. Do we have any comments or anything that uh, uh, Chris is? Uh, he's got all kinds. Of, he, Chris is saying all kinds. Oh, uh, Mike said hi. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh, Thomas Hubbard's here. Uh, Rob's got to get loading some bricks, <laughs> loading some trucks. Uh, are you talking taking a shot, Bill? No, mm -hmm. not taking a shot. So, um, but no, the uh, that we really like our shop, and I think it's turned. We have a lot of gr very good customers and stuff like that. So, Absolutely. Um, but also. I come in here and it is kind of difficult to, you know, not be listing on eBay when and, and selling stuff when people come in and want to chat and all yeah, that. And that's fine. And, and I make I, I make time yeah. for every customer I can. You know, I want to make sure I want to make sure they if they can't walk away and be like, hey, that guy wasn't very personable. You know, I will be personable, yeah. but I also have to do business. You know, mm -hmm. so and. People sometimes come in and ask for stuff that we just don't have, or stuff that we're not particularly selling. Also, like yeah. because I brought, you know, like I've had several people ask for Luka Doncic rookie cards, uh -huh. not selling them. I, I just don't really care to sell them right now. Um, I think that the market is strong. I think it's going to go up. I think most of those people that are asking, you know, they're if it was a collect if it's somebody just collecting and said hey they need one for their set or something like that you know i'm i'm more likely to help out that customer mm -hmm. but if it's just somebody that's trying to buy it to flip it or um you know i, I i'm doing the same thing so yeah um so you know we were talking about uh customers uh, he hey yeah. chris wanted to know if you never did rob say he's never had a nine to five job I have had th about three years of my life. I taught for two years, and that was somewhat recently. Uh, besides that, uh, I like did a lot of part-time stuff, mm -hmm. and I put myself through college the first time by working. I had no college loans the first time, um, but still, it was it was a part-time job. I How have, long did you work at log logistics? At healthcare logistics. Yeah. I worked at healthcare logistics only maybe nine months oh, to okay. a year. Yeah, I knew I knew yeah. you worked there. Yeah, that was that was probably one of them, and then teaching for two years. But mm -hmm. no, I've I've always had I I've but I've had seventeen different jobs. I yeah. sold insurance. I've uh, I he worked was, at I worked at a cemetery. He was a once. caretaker at a cemetery. I worked at a cemetery for a while. I I've done like all kinds of stuff, and then the cards were always in the background, mm -hmm. at least very part time. But then probably it's been a good ten to twelve years that. It's I've, been a focus. That the, the, the actual hobby boxes have yeah. been a focus, mm -hmm. um, probably. And, and, and that business has basically grown every year. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, I don't think my gross sales will be higher this year than they were last year or the year before. Uh, yeah. My gross sales will. Uh, my profit will be uh, a lot bigger uh, than yeah. it has been, um, yeah. which kind of tells you something about where the prices are mm -hmm. in the market and where oh, sure. if we're kind of meeting that... Yeah tipping point and which is something that we yeah. you know we want to talk about that we have definite opinions about that sure um, and you know something we get that we get uh, regularly get in here which which i i, I feel bad because we don't offer this but it's hard to is people want to buy a pack of cards yes they're like hey i want to try a pack of uh finest or whatever yeah. and it's like literally sent and i and i explained this to everyone so i'll explain it to you guys too ever since they put when the box is what you get per box, you know, yeah. you literally say, oh, okay, you get three autographs and a jersey. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and you don't know because Panini will throw in a points card and mess, you, mess up your whole day. Yeah. Because everybody gets a points card seems to have the worst day ever. They're like, oh, my gosh, that that was going to be Giannis. And now they got a points card. Yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, it's just not profitable to sell packs and then somebody hit that, hit the three autographs out of a box and us do that and we know you know if if i tell you i don't because we do offer some retail packs we do especially mm -hmm. during uh the player of the day yeah. um things uh right now we do have absolute football mm -hmm. um um fat packs. fat packs for sale by the pack 
Yeah. Um, it's just we're not going to lie to you. We, you know, we're very transparent. We we've told you that from the beginning. You know, if somebody's opened all three autographs out of a box and there's still ten packs in a box, I'm going to tell you. Um, not that we're trying to be. Not that we don't want to sell, you know, it'd be nice to sell those customers just want to come in, spend $20 and buy five packs or something, but yeah. it's difficult to do that in basketball now, yeah, completely. It would be. Maybe baseball, but even footballs, every product's up. I mean, yeah. it, you're literally, you're still pushing the kids out of the market, and it, it's a shame. Yeah. So, um, we'll probably only be on here another 10 or 15 minutes, mm -hmm. so... Uh, do you want to take a stab at like what do you what are your thoughts on the kind of wait I got a thing from Chris okay <laughs> it says I'm in a shop pricing some singles people complain about points cards have never had to had to struggle in their life lol I yeah. uh, you know what um or the the problem with the problem with the market and with your bigger boxes when I, I thought this a couple years ago when boxes were average 75 to 150 bucks. Like 150 bucks was like top in, not top in, you know, you had National Treasure and stuff like that, but you had 150 bucks. That was a strong box. And people come in and buy it and they get $20 worth of cards. And they're like looking at me in disbelief. They're like, why did I do that? You know, and I can offer them $20, you know, and it's like, I don't even want to do that. But, and they're like, oh man, I feel. But it's gambling. I mean, it really is. If you don't have the money to gamble like that, or you, one customer came in and said, I got $100. I need to hit a $300 card. Mm. Save your 100 bucks. You're yeah. a third of the way there to the 100, 300. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but what was your, what was the thing? Um, you know, just, you know, what do we think? Uh, we kind of promised people we'd give them a little bit of an idea of what we thought the market held for. And, and we'll just, we won't try to go too far. But we'll just say, you know, the first three months, January, February, March okay. of this year, what do you think? Uh, card value, card prices, strength of the hobby, uh, what do you think? And then I'll tell you what I think. Um, well, you know. Can we have somebody come in and tell us what's right? Yeah, sure. Sure. I mean, I, we, I, I welcome your comments. Yeah, we, we, we know, definitely. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Bobby has no clue. I appreciate everybody's opinion. Yep. Uh, okay. First quarter, 2021. Mm -hmm. I see bas the new basketball. I do not see the new basketball keeping the prices it did last year. I see people still going for it and case breakers breaking it and all that. The rookie class, from what I understand, there's a couple really good rookies. Uh, um, o uh, Obi Toppins, uh, my buddy said, is really good. Uh, there's a couple of them that are good, but not enough to have people busting cases of everything or you know to i don't see prism coming out at getting up to three thousand dollars a box i just don't see it happening i see it being a four or five hundred dollar box because that's just going to be a general uh thing right now to start out i i mean it could increase as the rookies go mm -hmm. i think basketball is going to same follow the same path as it did last year mm -hmm. uh, but i just don't see it trending up as much as it did because yeah. there in august it was it was the market was crazy. Tons of money flowing in the market. Yeah, absolutely. buying all these PSA grade ten Lucas Silvers yeah. and stuff like that, and planning on selling them. And if if you didn't get out when they were hot, you may never get your money out back. Yeah. Football, I see you're coming towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. um, your top draft pick, of course, is out for at least a year. Um, mm -hmm. That that has slowed down football a little bit. Uh, Justin Herbert being really good has helped. It stabilized it. Mm -hmm. Two is playing. They're actually winning, or he's putting on good performances. Yeah. Um, I think that football will stand pretty decent. Um, baseball, baseball right now is probably as low as it's ever going to go, um, just because they still haven't announced anything about Triple A, Double A, any minor leagues yet. What they're going to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not very profitable for them to have a minor league team if they don't have fans. Mm -hmm. Because each year your minor, especially in your um, Pioneer, Single A, Double A, rookie, rook, pioneer, rookie, Pioneer, Single A, Double A, a lot of those towns depend on the money from the companies, mm -hmm. or from the main team, 
to support themselves. But half of that money for the for the arena uh, for the stadium and stuff like that comes from the fans. Mm -hmm. And if you say the fans have to fit sit six foot apart, I just don't see them having fans. So you may only have Triple A baseball this year, and that and that's horrible because there's a lot of people that got shut out last year that would have progressed from single A to double A and should progress to triple A, but won't get that shot. So um, once they, I mean, fo football football doesn't really have, I mean, they have their practice squads, but they don't really have a minor league. And the basketball teams, they have their practice squads, but no, not like minor league teams. But yeah. baseball, I just don't know where the fu those future stars are going to be able to hold off being like, oh, man, I got to wait one more year to play baseball, you know. They have to move on. I mean, life's life, you know. And some, some of them, you're, you're going to see major league professional players that could have been had huge careers, yeah. literally bagging groceries. Because, like, um, for example, Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner uh, was let go, um, and years ago, he was bagging groceries at a grocery store, and the and the, the Cardinals was it? Who, who did he win the Super Bowl with? Yeah, the, Rams. the Rams. He yeah. got called back, and they needed him. They needed a quarterback. Yeah. He didn't win Super Bowl. So it can happen. So, um, but yeah, I think that um, prospecting, you know, I, I, still, I still tell people prospect. Set yeah. back what you can. If you can't set back autographs, set back numbered cards. Or, mm -hmm. um, there are plenty of people out there that are looking for them. Um, I don't invest much in vets mm -hmm. unless it's autographs and stuff like that. So. Um, oh, Chris Snyder uh, put his Facebook page. Uh, yeah, Chris Snyder, he's a friend of the show. He has a, a website or a Facebook uh, group. It's called Card Zone 7. If you want to check it out, he's actually located in Indiana, I believe. Um, yeah, if you want to check it out, uh, we, we've, um, he does, I think he does some breaks on there and he does a little bit of everything. So, but what, what, what's your forecast? Of, sorry about that. I, went, I rambled on. Uh, no, I was doing it by sport. Oh no! Yeah, I that's think, fine. I, I think uh, golf's going to be really hot too. Really? Yeah. Think, yeah. The reason I say that is because uh, there's going to be a Tiger Woods, um, like the Michael Jordan last day, and I guess they're doing a thing on ESPN about the career of um, Tiger Woods. Yeah. It's supposed yeah, to come out in think, February. Yeah. I, think I see Tiger Woods rookie cards coming up. I wish that a major brand, Upper Deck, come back. Yeah. Would start putting out golf carts again yeah. there is a huge fan base for them and there's a lot of these people that are winning majors that they don't have cards you know they just don't have anything yeah. i mean they they have reached over to soccer now mm -hmm. and uh but but that's like the major sport that you know the only cards that really come out of them is um mm -hmm. some some of them are in goodwin's champions and stuff like that mm -hmm. but i really i really think bringing back a golf set would would help out upper deck um, so I'll try to, uh, I mean, it's getting a little late, so I'll try I'll to, take time. I'll try to be concise about this. Um, so we kind of talked about the Gary V comment last week and the Gary V comment was something to the effect of when basketball comes back and starts playing, we haven't seen anything yet in the sports card market. Specifically, I believe he was talking about basketball and to be even more specific and be fair, he may have been talking about what would be considered last year's basketball now, like the Zion job, Durant stuff. Um, it, it's quite obvious when the season starts for whatever specific sport that that causes an influx in the interest in that mm -hmm. sp specific thing. Okay, so I'll, I'll give him that. Now, what I would say is five or six weeks ago, you and I sit here and said that we think the market's hit its epic high mm -hmm. and that it is starting to come down. Yes. I would reiterate that 100%. The best days, the epic highs have already passed. And I have literally watched for five weeks wax box prices stabilize. The, of course, there's the prism that comes out, but it was already at this set crazy high price. Yeah, like $1,000 a box. Yeah, yeah. and, and that, that I know what some of you are thinking. But behind the scenes, like on my rebuys and things like that, I've watched the average football product remain the same for five weeks. I've, I've watched the average baseball remain the same, slightly decrease. Uh, even basketball remain the same, slightly decrease. And that has not happened for two years. 
where I literally could see for five weeks there'd be almost no increase in the cost of my rebuys on most products. And I mean, I'm saying like 80% of products. So Not it's a, a first round rebuy, but a second round But rebuy. a second round rebuy, yes. And so it's already stabilized. I think we've already, we've noticed it within here in the shop with our customers saying enough's enough with the pricing, mm -hmm. the, 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 the crazy high pricing. I, I just had mentioned to Bill, um, or I might even have said it at the beginning of this, my gross sales this year are not even going to be any higher than the last two years. And my profitability is going to increase, but what that tells me is less and less customers are willing to pay $600 for a box of mm -hmm. cards. Yep. And so we have came to that high. So what do I see for the first, first uh, three months? absolutely it is going to decrease and it's not going to be i'm not saying a crash we're not i'm not saying anything like that but there is there is not one single group of cards or category of cards that's not going to be based on a player's play that increases as far as anything just you being able to throw your money at anything and it increase i totally think is not possible at this point yeah. and um i mean you can disagree with me but i think you're wrong I think that the next three months is uh, a time where you're going to see people trying to decide if they're going to sell off or or go forward. For sure. And then I don't see it great from there. I and here here are some things to think about. COVID nineteen was a big deal. It closed everybody down. In the midst of that, everybody's like, "What's going to happen?" Well, the market increased. Well, now the exact opposite is happening. We've got a vaccine. They, they may be optimistic or not, but this vaccine's going to be in people's hands by March. People are going to feel, feel more free to go out and, and do whatever, get out of their house, go on their vacations. Yeah. And so they're not going to be that much money being thrown that, into this hobby. That disposable income that people have had. Now, granted, the government gave away a bunch of money. People are getting yeah. like, you know, I, my, me and my wife got $2,400, like every couple yeah. that signed up for it or whatever. Yeah. Yes, we, we did. We got that money. Um, that, that helped us. It didn't break. We still paid our bills. We paid our rent. We paid our mortgage. Um, I've had less buffets because there hasn't been many open. Yeah. But um, I, you know, we we went along just as regular, um, just because that's just what we're doing. You know. Um, yeah. I just don't see a government relief. I don't see them giving out free money. Yeah. Uh, like one guy. One guy was showing how he took his twelve hundred dollars and made. Like twenty thousand dollars buying blasters at Walmart. Yeah. As if you guys are going to Walmart's now, you're seeing the stuff that people aren't able to flip and double their money on. Yeah. You're seeing, um, you you, you probably are seeing Bowman. I've not been in a Walmart in months, but I can tell you, you're probably going to see Bowman Platinum. You're going to see Tops uh, Gallery, and you're probably going to see Donner's Football. Uh, Donner's football blasters at twenty dollars is a very very fine deal. You know, you get like a piece of sweater of one of the rookie players or something like that, and it's good. It's a good product for twenty dollars, but it's not a good product for forty dollars mm -hmm. because you know the rookie. You know, you get a few rookies per box. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'd, not harping on the people from Walmart. If if you buy blasters at Walmart and resell them, that's fine. You are going to have a harder time finding things that you can buy and flip. Yeah, and I and I've had conversations with people that that are still calling me, going, "Hey, I'm looking at playoff right now. Yeah. Um, maybe some basketball that just come out. But, oh yeah. But you know the the market for that. You know yeah. the people that got in and made their quick money last year. Great. I'm yeah. glad you did. And, and and again, just to explain this, I mean very basic economic principle here is I'm just saying those $400 boxes this year are going to be 200 next year. So that's putting more people in the ability to afford that box. Yep. I still think money is going to be in this hobby. Oh uh, yeah, and, for sure. I still still think hey uh, guys, we're back again. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to start all over again. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, uh, uh, Chris said I'm right about the golf cards. I do believe that hundred yeah. percent. There are collectors out there for them. But they they need to make a good quality product. Yeah. Anyways, all right, we're gonna we're gonna leave here. Um, we're we're wrapping up. Anyways, uh, Dave Sarver joined us. He's one of the guys that we Rob kind of modeled his first years of buying boxes of wax mm -hmm. off of. He he did a local flea market that we yeah. that we attended, and yes, we he was in the eighties eighties early nineties. He was the man. 
for, right, yeah. for the new product. So yeah. uh, we appreciate you, Dave, and um, you, you've ruined our lives by selling <laughs> packs of cards years ago. At 14, yeah. At 14. So we, yeah. we, we waste our whole lives on this. So yeah. anyways, all right, guys, we are um, going to take off now. Yep. Thanks for um, watching. I, I evidently either have to price cards or look through cards or something. Yeah. I don't know. I'll do something in here for a couple hours. So. Yep. We'll All talk right. to you next week. Have a All good right. week. For me, for oh, check check out Game Time Sports Collect Collect dot com yep. for your wax products. Um, do you have supplies on there yet? I do have a few supplies. There Not are a some lot. supplies. I know that there's top loads. I know top loads are still scarce at some places. Yep. We have got a restock up top loads and we do have some magnets in mm -hmm. and we do have poly sleeves currently and they are very close to the original price they were uh they may be slightly higher but not five bucks a packet and like i think top no. load top loads are a dollar fifty or 250 250 yeah so um which is a very fair price so yeah all 